Deep in the mountains, a war is being waged that affects hundreds of thousands of living things. The challenges are many and varied, from climate, nature, to the very universe. While there's no smoking gun, there's still death. As for the outcome, he can only wait for fate to show its hand. The 2013 Chinese New Year has just passed. After breakfast, the 45-year-old Ho Guo Wan gathers his sickle and climbs the mountain behind his house. This is an area of nearly 200,000 square meters covered with tens of thousands of oak trees. Ho Guo Wan's task over the next month is to lop off all of their branches and is only the beginning of an enormous battle he faces. April 5th, for Ho and his family, today is a very special day. Today, their 20-year-old son, Ho Young Pan, returns home for vacation. Young Pan is a senior in the county high school, some 50 kilometers away. In two months' time, he'll take the National College entrance exam. He returns for only one day a month. <laughs> Young Pan only has one day's holiday. He needs to leave after lunch. After saying goodbye to their son, Ho and his wife jump on their motorbike and head towards a farm a few kilometers away. They've just received some good news. Some silkworms are beginning to hatch from the kilogram of eggs that Ho bought earlier this year. This tiny black creature is eager to see the outside world. The newly hatched silkworms look like black ants. Ho moves the baby silkworms over to the branches with a pair of special chopsticks. He's very careful because they're quite delicate and using too much force will hurt them. This year, Ho has 1.2 kilograms of silkworm eggs. Normally, there are 120,000 eggs for every kilogram. Close to 100,000 silkworms will hatch, meaning the process must be repeated that many times. As the temperature increases, more and more silkworms begin to hatch. The couple begins to panic. There's no better solution. Ho can only, for the time being, place the silkworm box outside the hatchery and transfer the hatched silkworms up the hill. On the hill, all the oak trees have been pruned. 
The tender leaves are exactly what the newly hatched larvae need. After settling this batch of silkworms, Ho has to go back to the farm to transfer the next batch. Today, Ho and his wife will be busy on the hill until late at night. The war has begun, and there will be no room for error. Far away in the county town, Ho Young Pat to the war his parents are waging. His own personal battlefield is at school. Rising at 5 a.m., after a quick wash of his face, he races to the classroom to memorize a few passages. At 7 a.m., the bell rings. Young Pan dashes towards the cafeteria for breakfast. The school allots half an hour for breakfast, but he gives himself just 15 minutes. Lushan number one senior high school is a key model school of Hernan province. More than 90% of its students are from the countryside. For these students, the national entrance exam offers the best chance for a brighter future. The competition, however, is very cruel. This year, Young Pan has to compete with 1,000 students in his school alone, not to mention the 700,000 spread across the whole province. Only one third of these students will be offered places at the schools of their choice. <coughs> Young Pan's scores have been hovering somewhere in the middle, but not good enough for a top school. This worries his parents. In ancient China, the silkworm was commonly believed to have been bestowed upon man from the heavens above. Its silk can be woven into luxurious silk cloth and, at the pupa stage, is a tasty, protein-filled food. More people are familiar with the southern mulberry silkworm than the ones in the north, which make their homes in oak trees. The silkworm has to go through five dormancies before eventually pupating and becoming a cocoon. The whole process needs to take place in the wild, which is far more complex than breeding mulberry silkworms. Lushan's sericulture has a history dating back thousands of years, and local Lushan silk has been offered as a tribute in every dynasty. In 1915, Lushan silk won a gold medal at the Panama Pacific International Exposition held in San Francisco. Today, besides the large-scale processing of silk, the most traditional method of silk production in Lushan is still very much alive. In fact, the silkworm industry has always been a pillar of the local economy. Even now, hundreds of thousands of local farmers still sell silk bedding made from Lushan silk. Locals have established their own Bureau of Sericulture to oversee production. Hokuowan's village is short on arable land, and the locals in the past lived mainly on sericulture, despite the meager income it brought. With the development of local tourism, men have chosen to work elsewhere, leaving the seniors, women and children behind in the villages. A few years back, Ho and his wife also joined the wave of fellow villagers to find work outside, coming home only for the Chinese New Year. 
After a while, Ho found his children became increasingly indifferent of them. Last year, their daughter took the national exam, but her marks didn't make the cut, so she eventually went to a third tier university. This year, it's time for their son to take the exam. At this critical time, Ho has decided to stay at home and give up his job outside the village. The silkworms keep hatching. Ho shuttles back and forth between the shed and the hillside, transferring the newborn larva to the oak trees. Today, for some unknown reason, the silkworms are hatching at a much slower rate. Normally, the silkworm should hatch from their eggs within two days. The longer it takes, the more damaging it can be. A neighboring village is just three kilometers. The village is even more remote and less accessible. Most of the villagers there still make a living by breeding silkworms. Seventy-two-year-old Ho Guo Jian, Ho Guo Wen's cousin, is from this neighboring village. His only son died in a car accident a few years earlier. His daughter-in-law then took the grandchild away when she remarried. Guo Jian has given up his own silkworm farm to rent one next to his cousins. Today, Ho Guo Jian's silkworms are hatching rapidly. He just wishes he had more energy. The following morning, Ho Guo Wan and his brother-in-law go together to fetch the silkworm box. The administrator of the hatchery tells them that other people's silkworms are hatching quickly, only theirs remains problematically slow. <laughs> Fortunately, as the temperature rises, more and more silkworms begin to hatch. Ho Guo Wen is relieved. In the end, 1.2 kilograms of silkworm eggs eventually turn into as many silkworms. Ho has managed to clear the first hurdle. But this small victory doesn't mean Ho can relax. An even greater challenge is awaiting him. He must soon make a choice as to whether he should persevere or give up. As the national exam draws near, the atmosphere at the school is growing ever tenser. 
Dan's class is having a mobilization meeting for the exam. Yeah, 我想只要付出了总会有回报如果高考之后的话有机会我一定要去内蒙古大草原在那里我觉得感觉到一定非常的开阔那种感觉还有就是我以后上大学之后就过了高考这个敲门砖以后可以再读研考博等等以后会变世
好，今天晚上到明天，当地是阴线多云天气，啊，那么集中的在杭州前十八天，主要是大陆呀，没没降下来。The low temperatures continue to linger, causing increasing numerous silkworms to perish. If the cold weather continues for another few days, a poor silkworm harvest is guaranteed. Silkworm farmers in this village suffer a heavy loss. Most of them have given up on this year's harvest and have no choice but to do something else. Ho Guo Wen is giving it one last try, but he's prepared for the worst. The Sericulture Bureau steps in with some timely relief measures to stop a massive die-off. Despite this, more than half of the silkworms are gone. Ho Guo Wen estimates his final income will be only around 6,000 yuan, assuming the remaining silkworms survive. This will not be enough money for his kids' tuition fees. It looks like Ho has no choice but to let his wife take care of the remaining silkworms while he goes out to find work. This way, they can at least make some extra money. This flies in the face of their original wish of accompanying their son for the national exam. The uncertainty tortures Ho Guo Wen, and before he knows it, it's the May holiday. His daughter and son both arrive home.
圈儿，真的是，因为要不要早上的。今天看起来调的很火。你待会儿你不想吃了，都都一样。你该放油。油也是，油也加一点油。Ho's son helps him come to a decision. He will continue to raise silkworms. He feels it's more important to accompany his son during this important transition in his life. He doesn't want anything to go wrong over the next two months. I think I'm going to go to the next two months. I don't want anything to go wrong. I'm going to go to the next two months. 弄啥都不容易，弄啥都有难处，没有迈不出过去的坎儿吧呵呵？慢慢来，一步一步的来吧。Now that the snow is a distant memory, a new challenge erupts. Will Ho be able to withstand the test? Despite the recent catastrophe, the surviving silkworms grow quickly. They are now four to five centimeters long and are well nourished from the oak leaves. However, a new threat stealthily approaches. This ridge is home to many silkworm predators, namely birds, beetles, ants, and wasps. These predators lurk upon the clumsy, plump, and vulnerable silkworm as a delicacy. For Ho, this is the annual nightmare he must confront. Set up bird nets on the hillside well in advance. These airborne predators present the greatest threat to the silkworms. When silkworm farming was at its peak, silkworms could be found all over the mountainside, decreasing the likelihood of any one farmer's produce being devastated. The last few years has seen fewer and fewer silkworm farmers, hence has increased several fold. You don't care if it's really good, because it's not good for the people who eat it. Ho Guo Wan stands watch on the hill from morning to night. In the past, farmers were able to use a blunderbuss to drive away the birds. Now they can only use a bird net. Ho must fight this battle using only a slingshot. By silkworm slope, Ho Guo Jian feels a little weary. He takes the occasional nap in between standing guard. 
As a result, more than half of his silkworms have been consumed within just a few short days. Having witnessed what has happened to his cousin, Ho Guo Wen does not dare relax at all. He has too much riding on the silkworm's survival. There's only a week to go before the national exam. Young Pan unexpectedly has one day's leave. He has been feeling ill recently and wants to see a doctor. Uh, After Young Pan leaves, Ho returns to the hillside to transfer the silkworms. His son's condition, nevertheless, worries him. But Ho doesn't have much time to think it over. In two weeks' time, the silkworms will turn into cocoons, and there'll be no time for rest at all. Grazing on the nutrition-filled oak leaves, the silkworms grow rapidly. Soon, they'll enter the fourth dormancy. They're already very large, with an enormous appetite, eating everything in sight. He needs to transfer the silkworms to a new farm as swiftly as possible, if he's to have any chance of avoiding disaster. This is known as a farm transition. Ho runs between the hillsides dozens of times a day, carrying a basket of silkworms weighing around 30 kilograms. Farm tr the national exam starts tomorrow. Young Pan's classroom for now remains empty, but tomorrow it will be the exam site. June 7th, traffic near the school is blocked. All construction noise is banned. Everything must give way to the national exams. Most parents wait anxiously outside the exam halls, but Ho isn't among them. His war has reached a critical stage. The silkworms begin to morph into cocoons. After their fifth dormancy, the silkworm finds an oak leaf and begins to secrete proteins. This secretion turns into silk when exposed to air. Each thread of silk is 1,000 meters long. The silk slowly twines around the silkworm, forming a cocoon. Ho's cousin begins harvesting the cocoons. Because there aren't that many, he wants to finish as soon as he can and go home. I'm going to 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 go home. I'm going
Today is the second day of the exam. The Dragon Boat Festival is approaching and the children will soon be back at home. Ho called his son the previous evening. In another half an hour, the three-day exam will be over. Ho and his wife are beginning to get nervous. Uh After coming home, Young Pan's mood doesn't improve. Ho's greatest worry has also materialized. On the Chinese part of the exam, Young Pan was too nervous and forgot to write a title for his essay. <laughs> Those cocoons are all harvested, about 300 kilos in total, which is less than half of last year's yield. However, since the yield is low all over the region, the price he fetches per kilo should be higher. Ho heard that a few days earlier, cocoons from a neighboring village sold at 50 yuan per kilo. This raises his hopes. However, there seems to be fewer cocoon buyers this year. Last year, there were dealers everywhere. Yesterday, a group of dealers was about to buy cocoons at 46 yuan a kilo, but they eventually backed off because the quality seems worse than last year. This is the time when the cocoons start to morph into moths. This isn't good news. Ho's wife returns from town, carrying some bad news. Mm -hmm. 
Meanwhile, there's a call from the silkworm egg farm. This year, the silkworm farm has decided to purchase cocoons, but it has strict quality requirements. A large number of cocoons won't make the cut. Although the price offered isn't bad, Ho is still reluctant. Once the cocoons are transported to the farm, they have to go through careful selection. This sifting. For a variety of reasons, many cocoons are damaged. After sifting, for those experts, it's easy to know which ones are damaged. This year, Ho's silkworm harvest is poor, which means fewer will be purchased. <laughs> 50 kilos out of Ho's harvest are deemed low quality and excluded from the sale. This means he'll book a loss of over 4,000 yuan, which he finds acceptable, given he hasn't any other options. It's June 25th, and in a few hours, the scores for the national exams will be announced. Hey, 
八万，真八万啊！真八万，八万啊！啥呀？新的门店成员会。哎呦！It's July 20th at a construction site not far from the village. Ho Guo Wen is working hard to pay for his children's tuition fees. He may give silkworm farming another chance next year, since his son once more will need to prepare for the national exam. Yang Pan returns to his student existence, hitting the books hard for another year. Meanwhile, Ho's cocoons will be placed in cold storage. Next spring, the cocoons will slowly awaken, emerge, mate, spawn, and hatch. It's been a year of suffering and hardship, but as in nature, life ultimately gets a second chance. <laughs> 